All right, guys, I'm gonna to try to update you to where we're at right now. Um, hopefully I can get this all right. It's been a long time since I posted a video, but you need to know a bunch of stuff has happened to the old mule. So, all right, where do I start? Um, <clears throat> the uh, exhaust stud broke, I had to fix that. Um, and uh, that broke because one of these bands down here broke. I know that's weird, but apparently that is a thing on mules. If one of these breaks, down there, one of those stainless steel bands, one of those brakes, then you are likely to break a stud, either in the front or the rear. Uh, I didn't show the rear, back there somewhere. And um, that is the situation there, got that fixed. So after I get it fixed, I'm really stoked. I go for a ride and um, I get down the road, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half and uh, my uh, check engine light comes on. Uh, let me see if I can show it to you. Usually it'll kick on whenever. That one right there. So that check engine light kicked on. Never mind the oil leak, that's from the Honda, that's not from the fuel. And um, so I'm like, what in the heck, you know? But it's really, really hot. So I'm thinking, well, maybe possibly it's because it's just really hot, you know? Because the fan back here is running like crazy. I'm thinking, okay, all right, well, whatever. So I, I get off, uh, I end up, you know, in the area where I'm gonna be and um, get off the bike, shut it down, fans running, it's cooling itself off. I'm out there for, I don't know, five or 10 minutes. I come back to go riding and um, he goes, click, click, click. I'm like, what? So I'm thinking, did one of the posts come loose? So I take off the seat, start looking at the posts. No, they're tight. I'm like, what in the world is going on? At this point, I'm really worried that maybe I fry the battery. So these two guys were there. Luckily, uh, one of them had jumpers and uh, we jumped off the battery got the bike going. <clears throat> so I get down the road, I'm thinking, well, I'm just gonna be lining for the house. So I start <clears throat> getting down the road. I made it all of like two miles. Check engine light comes right back on. And um, and then I'm like, oh crap. Now something's really bad. So check engine light comes on and then um, the gauges go completely dead like that. That's what I'm looking at as I'm going about 30 miles an hour. I'm like, great. The headlight is out. I'm like, you know, looking over the, the front of the, the bars. And I'm like, oh crap. And then it starts running really bad. And then it just completely dies as I pull into this resort. And I'm, I'm up by Lake Texoma. So if you know where that's at, you can look it up on a map. So I'm up there at this resort. I'm thinking, holy crap, man. So I call my wife. She's an hour and a half away, like I said. And I'm like, look, you gotta bring some tools and some jumper cables. I hope, I hope we can get this thing back home. So then, um, I'm uh, sitting around waiting, we get, my wife shows up, we charge the battery, get it running. Had to charge it up twice on the way home. Luckily, I did get home. So, I, I'm, at this point, I'm pretty, no, I pretty much know the charging system has gone bad. I'm really hoping that the stator, which is in there, didn't suddenly decide to take a crack. And um, so I performed all the testing to test the stator. And I'm like, okay, so what's putting out the right voltage? Check the battery, um, perform a test on the battery, make sure it's good. It was actually fine. So then I'm thinking, okay, well, the only thing left is the voltage regulator. And by process of elimination, um, through the test that I was performing, uh, that's tests, plural, the only thing left was the voltage regulator. <clears throat> so I ordered a new one. And um, one is kind of a trophy, but two, as a backup. So these wires here in the black, you see that silver mark I put there? They were reversed, but I didn't see that. You couldn't see it. You wouldn't really pay attention to that. And plus, you know, it, it, you know, you just assume that somebody's gonna do the right thing and get the factory and put things together. No, they don't, they don't do that. So I plugged the voltage regulator in, hooked the battery up and bam, I hear pop. I'm like, what? So I'm looking and I see one of the uh, fuses has popped. I'm like, what in the world's going on? So I don't, at this point, I don't know. I'm like, actually kind of worried, like, did I leave the key on or something? What did I do? So I check everything again. Uh, okay, so I happen to have another 20 amp fuse, put the 20 amp fuse in, pop immediately. I mean, nothing, just put it in and it popped. Like, uh, there is a problem. So I go, come back down here and look again. Then I notice, I got black to red, red to black. I'm like, oh my gosh, this freaking thing is wired backwards. So I pull it all apart and wire it up the right way, plug it back in, and I still have problems. 
Well, there are some relays underneath the seat. Those relays all popped, all of them fried. Actually, two out of the three. There are three relays, two of the three popped, fried themselves, and several of the uh, fuses. So, yeah, I had to order, I just went ahead and ordered all new relays. So it's got all new relays. Half of the fuses are new, which is fine. You know, I mean, they, whatever. Uh, and I go for another ride. Going down the road, I actually am about 30 minutes from the house um, in a neighboring town. And uh, everything's, it's running totally fine. We get underneath the pavilion, I park the bike. Everything's totally good. No check engine lights. Bike is running really good. Go to start it up, click, click, click. It's dead again. I'm like, you have got to be freaking kidding me. So at this point, I'm like, what in the world happened? So I'm like, you know, making sure I didn't mess up the switch. You know, the switch is not, you know, fidgety. I got it halfway or something weird. I don't know. I don't know how I'd even do that. I'm even trying now. I can't even do that. But anyways, I was checking all these things. So at this point, I know that the battery's flat because the, uh, the headlight isn't even really coming on. It's really dim. So, and my buddy that I was with has no jumper cables. Yeah, perfect day. So... Get the bike, uh, the battery comes up just enough. This thing barely cranks over. It's like the, one of those, it grunts and it goes, and I'm like, holy crap. So I'm like, I tell my friend, get in your car, we're leaving. Yeah, he's in his car and I'm riding. So we beelined it straight for the house. And um, so I'm like, what in the world's going on? I uh, checked the battery and uh, no, no, actually at this point, I did not check the battery. I just, you know what, I'm assuming I missed something when I tested the battery. They're only $45 for a good one. So I bought a, a new AGM for it. Um, now on Amazon, I'll post the, the link down below. And got the new AGM battery. And uh, I'm riding, everything's fine. It's all good. I'm like, okay, that was the problem. I rode for, seriously, like two weeks. Everything's fine. So. One day I'm coming back from uh, a gr quick grocery run. That's my grocery getter bag. My, my wife is cool and says, if, he, if there's any micro errands, you get to run them on the bike. So that's fine. So I'm riding back from the grocery store and freaking check engine light comes on again. And I know what's happening. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. Well, um, I get home, immediately pull off the side cover, which is where all the connectors are. And I'm, I'm going to start doing my test all over again. Um, oh, by the way, I tested the new battery. It was totally fine. So I eliminated that. I'm back to, well, either my stator decided to go bad at some point or this regulator, that is Chinese regulator I got is gone again. No, that wasn't the case. The regulator, the connectors on it, let's see if I... So those prongs are really, 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 really skinny. I mean, they're super thin. Thinner than the factory harness connector. And so, must have over time gotten hot. It actually melted the factory side, the bike side of the uh, harness, the male side of the connector. Like, great, well, so I ordered a new connector kit. And I got the real Delphi one, and I will definitely post that link down below. You want that. If you're a Buell rider, you definitely want to have that link and uh, keep it in your in your bookmarks or order one. It was like, uh, the whole kit was like eight bucks. And I figured, man, that's money ahead right there. So I'm gonna keep that. Replace the, the factory side. And by this time, I've spent roughly 150 bucks. And I, I you know, I'm like, so I contacted the uh, seller of the Chinese thing and I said, look, I showed all the pictures of everything, gave a rundown, a list and money I spent trying to fix this bike, all due to something being reversed and done wrong. The uh, seller on Amazon was cool, gave me my money back for the part, didn't uh, require me to send it back. And um, so um, I'm, I'm still further ahead on money than I wanted to be from a simple replacement. So whatever, I decide I should have done this in the first place. I should have learned my lesson. I'm going to get a Mike's Hot Shot. Or uh, does it? Rick's, sorry, Rick's Hot Shot. So I finally get the right part. And 
Rick's hot shots are not a direct fit. So the, the wiring is totally fine. I got it all set up. Everything was hunky-dory, everything plugged in, not having any issues. But we came to this point right here. And so I had to uh, make a bracket. So right here is um, a plate that I made um, and uh, just have kind of an adapter. None of the holes lined up, nothing lined up. The other part of the adapter setup is, and I know it's not really all that great looking, but it works really well. It's very solid. Um, is uh, some standoffs, as you can see there. The problem was, is that tube. So had that tube not been there, and had I had a CNC machine and been able to CNC some, you know, block of aluminum to make it look really cool and flush mount it, would have been much better. I would have been much happier with that. But I am happy with this. And all the parts I got, my buddy gave me the plate steel. Um, the uh, hardware got from uh, Ace Hardware, just right up the street, all stainless steel stuff. And, um, you know, for, I don't know, like 10 bucks, I was able to make a mount. And we're in business. I've been riding for a couple weeks now. And um, that thing never gets hot, ever. And I'm kind of glad that it's got the standoff because it gets airflow all the way around. And as you can see that, you know, the header is right there. It's right next to the head itself. So that thing is just getting heat from, from that back side and from this side over here, just blasting this thing. And granted when there's airflow, you know, it's, it's doing fine, but it never, and I mean it, it never ever gets hot. So um, I'm glad that I did it that way. It has plenty of clearance. Uh, between it and the uh, the, top, the front tire, um, did a you know a, a full mush test on the the fork. And by the way, this is another thing I have to do. I've got to replace the seals, do a full fork service on this thing soon. Maybe this winter I'll do that. I'm just enjoying riding it because I have I did not get to ride it for like I said almost a month. Um, so that kind of sucked. Uh, I don't remember if you guys saw the tires last time. I got some Stinkos on it. Um, they're fine. They're doing good. Actually doing actually really well on these uh, really crummy roads I live on. One of these days I'm going to ride out to one of the turns I'm talking about and show you pictures of what I mean and why I say I was not going to spend a lot of money on tires, especially where I live. The roads are just, they're awful. And I'll take some photos of that. Bike's dirty right now, but I'm okay. Rode it to work today. Um, Brought home some friends. They wanted to ride the last ride of their lives. Anyways, yeah, man. Oh, uh, brake fluid's been changed, both front and rear. Um, and uh, I was actually going to do a video about that, right? And that's when I discovered that the exhaust stud had broken. So. Yeah, I don't know where that video is at. It might be on my computer somewhere, and if I can find it, I'll post it. But this is just where we're at today. Uh, it's now October 15th or something like that. And uh, starting to cool off. The fuel's running good. I'm happy. I got a running bike again. And uh, I can move on to making it look pretty and just doing the small, simple stuff. At least I hope. You know, it is a 15-year-old bike. And um, yeah, it's a project bike, and I, you know the guy, whoever the two owners before me were, they kind of sort of took care of it in some regard. You guys saw the wiring from the, the rear tail light. I don't know who did that, but um, anyways, yeah. All right, guys. Oh, I was going to also uh, mention it does not burn a lick of oil. I've got um, 3,500 miles on this oil so far. And um, I'm gonna do 5,000 on it and then change it. Doesn't burn it at all. Not any, oh, one more thing. Dang, man, it's been a, so there's a lot that's happened. Um, clutch cable. Uh, you guys saw one of the other videos that thing was leaking. Dry as a bone. Brand new cut clutch cable, I'll post a link. Got that from uh, St. Paul Harley Buell. And uh, work like a charm, they give you a seal with it to make sure you're good to go down there. And um, there's also a video I'll post for, you know, just a, a quick, like, you know, um, visual aid uh, that I used to kind of help me. I mean, the manual is, is helpful, 
but sometimes it's helpful to see somebody else do it and then, you know, you got it. So that's what I did and uh, it was pretty easy. It took, I don't know, 30 minutes to uh, change out the whole thing. And um, yeah, I think, I think that is actually it. So, all right guys, well, thanks for bearing with me while I went through this whole thing and fumbled through my words as I tried to remember everything that had occurred on this bike and where we're at today. Um, as always, thanks for, for watching and uh, uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I guess the sharing part, whatever. I don't care if you like or subscribe. I'm just glad that you're watching it. Anyways, until then, uh, you guys peace out and keep it between the ditches.